Hi, I'm Bill, and you're watching the Astro Vagabond channel. So it's uh, Saturday, 1029. I'm still in Borrego Springs at the Nightfall 2022 event. And uh, while I uh, had it on my mind, I wanted to talk a little bit about the ASI MC, uh, correction, ASI 533 MC Pro, the color camera. And uh, I've been using it the last few days with my Xenostar uh, Z61 Mod 2. It's a 360 millimeter uh, focal length. And I, I'm beginning uh, to ask myself, is it really the right camera to pair uh, with the focal length of my Xenostar? I mean, the camera's great. Um, what it produces is great. But I find myself having to do uh, mosaics uh, with the one inch sensor and the objects that I've been shooting down here. So M45, the Pleiades, it was great. I was able to frame it in one uh, frame. Uh, the Sol Nebula, I needed two frames. Uh, I, I should say we all have our personal preferences and I like, I guess coming from being a former photographer, uh, I like to have a little bit of room to crop and so in order for me to shoot the uh, Sol Nebula, I needed to do a two-panel mosaic. And um, then when it came to uh, the Heart Nebula, uh, I felt to give it uh, uh, justice, I needed to do a four-panel mosaic. And then uh, most recently, the last two nights, and I'll uh, work on it a little bit tonight, will be uh, M31 Andromeda Galaxy, uh, where I am doing a four-panel mosaic. So. Mosaics are not an issue for me. I've uh, successfully done uh, a two panel in uh, Pix Insight. Um, but I I'm just really wondering, do I want to shoot all these mosaics and would a better, with a different size sensor camera, be better paired with the 360 millimeter focal length? So for those of you that may have the 533 MC Pro and you've got it paired with your um, maybe a 360 millimeter focal length uh, scope. Uh, why don't you give me some of your thoughts on what your experiences are? Again, I probably could have fit the Sol Nebula in one frame. Uh, you know, the heart, uh, I couldn't, I could not. So again, I, I think it's personal preference. We all have our preferences. So where this is leading me is when I originally got into uh, astrophotography two years ago, back in uh, December of uh, uh, 2019 or beginning of uh, uh, 2020, I tried to get a Red Cat 51, uh, but none were available. So I went the next focal length up in size. And uh, this telescope, <laughs> while it is a doublet, uh, it is a good scope. Uh, I, the, the optics are good. Um, would I like a triplet? Uh, probably. So I've been starting to think, you know, is the Red Cat 51 uh, maybe a better scope for me uh, paired with the uh, ASI 533 MC Pro camera and its one inch sensor? So what troubles me about that is, you know, that's an opportunity to spend more money. So clearly the cheaper route right now is just go ahead and make the mosaics and spend a little more time processing. Uh, but clearly I've been uh, thinking about the, um, the Red Cat 51. Uh, maybe uh, I should purchase that scope and uh, use that with the 533. I've been also looking at the Red Cat um, uh, 71, but again, that takes me into the 360 millimeter uh, focal length again. And with the 533 MC Pro uh, one inch sensor, uh, I'm back to shooting mosaics. So I'm um, really not complaining. Um, I just thought I would uh, do this uh, video and share it with you. Maybe some of you are thinking about purchasing this camera. And uh, based upon what focal length telescope you have, you might want to give it some thought. You know, go into astronomy tools. Uh, or go into uh, Telescopus and, and do some framing or whatever framing tool uh, you may use and, and figure out uh, uh, what your thoughts are when you pair this with a 360 millimeter uh, uh, telescope. And then uh, 
For those of you that have the Red Cat 51, if you happen to be using the 533 MC Pro, if you could kind of share your thoughts on uh, framing when, you, when it comes time to frame. Um, I know some people uh, behind me here had a Red Cat 51, and I think they were saying with the 250 millimeter focal length, they could get uh, both the Heart Nebula and the Soul Nebula in the same frame. So again, uh, just sharing some thoughts. Uh, real quick, quickly, this is my uh, last night here. Uh, forecast is for some clouds to come in. Uh, um, uh, if you haven't seen my latest update on my uh, uh, Edge HD8, uh, where I'm at with that. Uh, last night I, I ran the uh, guiding assistant uh, and I also took another look at collimation. Clearly my collimation is off, so I need to uh, fix that. I need to find a very good process for doing collimation. And then uh, with those things out of the way, then I could see what I, where I'm at and see if there's any uh, a tilt that may be present. I don't really want to go down that road, uh, but I'll go where I have to go. So uh, with clouds coming in tonight, I'm going to spend some more time on uh, M31 uh, to finish that off. And on the C8, I'm just going to do some uh, more troubleshooting and also work on developing a good, reliable process for doing collimation. I'm gonna fire up a meta guide and see if that can maybe help me. Uh, but uh, other than that, uh, it's been a great week. I've been here since Sunday night. I'm tired, uh, just getting cat naps during the course of the week. But uh, I tell you, I wouldn't trade it for anything. It's been a lot of fun, met some great people here. And probably the next video you see for me will be from home. Uh, when I'm sitting down and starting to process the data, which I'll share in uh, future videos. But uh, this was a great event, and I'm glad I put forward the effort to come down from San Mateo uh, down to uh, Borrego Springs and participate in this event. And the weather uh, for the first five nights was just uh, fantastic. So, all right, well, that's about it. If you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. As always, like, share, and subscribe. And uh, I want to thank all my viewers and subscribers for continuing to follow me on the channel. And uh, wherever you may be in the world, clear skies. Till next time. Now it's supposed to fail.